What is up you guys, NASM here, and I found this topic, or thread, whatever it's called, on the Shaman forums, which has all the information you really need to know about Ellie Shaman in pre-patch, and since I've been getting so many questions on my YouTube channel, whether it be messages or on stream or in-game or whatever, asking about different things for Ellie in pre-patch, I decided to kind of work in collaboration with this thread for those who don't feel like reading it all and just give all the information in summarized video fashion so without further ado let's get started so the number one question I've been getting is the new stat priority which actually has changed very little except for with the removal of multi-strike that is obviously no longer a factor the new hierarchy is crit, haste, haste is about equal but slightly over versatility and then mastery is way down so get rid of all the mastery you can Crit over haste with versatility, just no mastery. And the only thing that really changed was multi strike is obviously gone, and crit has surpassed haste, which was really, really close before anyway, and mastery got a little better. Other than that, it's very similar. Number two question I get most frequently is what talents should I be using now? The pre patch is out, everything's all changed. And it's honestly, there are some that vary, but it's pretty cookie cutter right now. For 15 talent tree, Earth and Rage and Totem Mastery are pretty close. Totem Mastery pulls slightly ahead, other than like super bursty phases. Like if you really need to push burst really hard, you can go Earth and Rage, but it's very very minor. Path of Flame lags behind in pretty much every situation. I haven't really found any useful situation for Path of Flame, so I've been going with Earth and Rage just because I don't have a weak or for Totem Mastery yet. But I would not advise that. You should probably go with Totem Mastery since it is slightly better. 30 talent tree is situational, but all we know is Ancestral Guidance is pretty terrible. Windrush Totem is situational, like if you need... Your whole raid needs to move quickly at one point, like in Zoharok if you're switching to next phase or whatever, you can go with that. It kind of depends on what your raid leader requests. But normally I would go with Gust of Wind just because it's so incredibly useful. It's like Blink but slower. 45 talent tree is entirely situational. Again, the only one that doesn't really work well is Voodoo Totem in PvE. Earthcrab Totem and Lightning Search Totem. Usually Lightning Search Totem is going to be more useful. So if you just have to pick one and just go into a raid with it, I would go with Lightning Search Totem. Level 60 Talent Tree, the main one that everyone's using is Ancestral Swiftness. Echo of the Elements and Elemental Blast are lagging behind. Ancestral Swiftness is pretty much best in every situation. Talent Tier 75. Pretty much always Primal Elementalist. Ice Fury can be good in really situational fights, but in general, go with Primal Elementalist. It's also a lot easier to use. You just kind of use it on cooldown. Level 90 is pretty much always Elemental Mastery. Storm Elemental is literally a DPS decrease, so definitely do not use that ever. You're literally better off not having a 90 talent. And Aftershock is mediocre at best, so Elemental Mastery is the way to go. It also lines up with the ring and makes your 100 talent very, very good, because your 100 talent is usually going to be Ascendance. That's what pretty much every top Ellie is using currently because the burst is so good and kill times are so short that Ascendance plus Elemental Mastery plus Ring is incredibly good. But this is also probably the second most situational talent tree. Or second closest talent tree, I should say. 15 talent tree with their two close ones. But this one has three viable ones, which is pretty much the only time that's happened. Lightning Rod apparently I haven't really tested lightning rod much so I can't personally say but from what the thread I was talking about says lightning rod is best for cleave and decent single target it's obviously not as bursty as ascendance but it would keep up on like a longer fight I would assume and liquid magma totem is really good for AoE that happens every one minute ish because that would be the cooldown on more than like three targets it's it's really really good I was using it on mana rock and it did a lot of damage. But in general, if you have to pick one to go into a raid with it, you don't want to change talents ever, go with Ascendance and just kind of use it on cooldown. So now something that a lot of people didn't know is that pretty much every Hellfire Citadel Trinket got significantly nerfed. The RPPM changes and 40% nerfs made them a lot weaker, so you'll be using different trinkets. The new hierarchy is going to be Core Primal Elements, 
which is actually even more powerful now, especially because you don't have to buff up every flame shock. Sandman's Pouch, Stone of El Stone of the Elements, Orb of Void Sight, and Chip's Soul Prism. Below that would be Iskar Trinket, but yeah, I, mean, I guess if you want a full this list, you can probably check Ask Mr. Robot. I'm not sure if theirs is entirely accurate, but yeah, so it is it is changed significantly, because normally it would be core Primal Elements and then Iskar Trinket, but now Iskar is way below a lot of other things because it got so heavily nerfed. But if you can get your hands on a Sandman's Pouch, stage 6 of 6, it is very, very good for bursting, and it's good overall. So that would be the new new trinket hierarchy. So the rotation remains very, very similar to what it, what it was before, but in case anyone's new or just wants to know, I will briefly go over what I found the most success with. Now, keep in mind I haven't done sims or anything, so I can't be 100% certain this is the best rotation for a single target, but it definitely won't do you wrong, like you won't be doing bad DPS if you follow this, because I've been doing very good DPS following this. So the basics are very similar, is keep Flame Shock up at all times on any target that's going to live longer than probably like 20-30 seconds. Then Earth Shock if you're at or above 89 Maelstrom. Now the reason for this such, such a precise number is that Lava Burst gives 12 Maelstrom, so if you're going to be casting a Lava Burst, if that's next on the priority after that, Lava Burst, you don't want to go over. So if you're already at 89 Maelstrom, if you cast out a Lava Burst, you are wasting one Maelstrom, and you never want to waste Maelstrom. It's wasting your primary resource, it's very very bad, it's like a hunter sitting at max focus. It's something you definitely don't want to do. So yeah, after after 88 or 89 plus Maelstrom Earth Shock, you have Lava Burst, and then Earth Shock if it's like 80-ish. Then after that, it's just your Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning Filler. Lightning Bolt being single target, Chain Lightning being two or more targets. So I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. And then obviously, you want to use your cooldowns on coal and everything. Let's keep your Totem Mastery up if you're tar if you're uh, expecting to that. That would be above Flame Shock even, I'd say. But other than that, it's pretty pretty simple. So I decided I didn't want to leave this video without an AOE part, and I got kind of into it when I started going. I just did math like 30 minutes, but I have concluded that if there are three targets, all of which will last 10 seconds at least, and they will not be moving out of your Earthquake, it is worth using Earthquake over Earth Shock. If there are two targets, it is a very small but like very, 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 very small DPS loss to use Earthquake on the two targets instead of Earth Shot. You still want to use Chain Lightning on anything over one target, but on two targets you should not be using Earthquake. I can't confirm this for other gear levels, but at my gear level, which is 742, uh, five gem sockets, all with haste, and best in slot, pretty much everything. This is the case. So two targets, do not use Earthquake, three targets or more, use Earthquake. Another thing about AoE is that you want to be multi-dotting as much as you can if you have Class Trinket. Because Class Trinket is really, really good now in the pre-patch. It was really good before, but now that you don't have to wait five seconds to dot another thing, it is really, really good. So use, your, use that Flame Shock, dot all the things if you're doing like AoE, if they're going to last a while, that is. If they're going to only last like 10 seconds, don't bother. But if they're going to live a long time, be dotting everything, like on High Council, keep dots up on all of them. On Gorfiend, I was dotting all the ads and ended up getting a really good parse. I don't, I don't know the exact math, but dot things, basically. So I think that about sums up everything you need to know about Ellie Shaman in the pre-patch. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below for me to answer, or if you want an answer from Gistwiki, the guy who wrote and found most of this information. Feel free to leave a comment on the topic that will be probably linked in the description. Definitely linked in the description, actually. And he, he's he been answering pretty much everything that has been asked on there. So if you have any questions, go feel free to scroll through and see if they've already been answered. If they have not, then definitely go ahead and ask, because there are lots of people who are willing to answer. So that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for watching or listening. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more from me personally. Comment what you want to see or question your comments. Whatever. If you have a comment, go ahead and leave it in the comment section, as implied. And if you like the video, feel free to give it a like. If you like the topic, feel free to give that a like too.
Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys next time.